Hayata. Um, so I'll explain the rules to my audience and yours so that they know what's going on. Um, so if you're in the audience right now and you want to go on an e-date with our lovely lady, Toph, uh, you just need to hop into the waiting room. Um, it is going to be first come first serve. There's a couple of rules you need to be aware of though, uh, when you come on the show. So there is a rule list. Um, Red Penny can send it out to you. You can access it. I will be posting the rule list as well um, in the side chat. So I'm just going to copy and paste it right now. Um, it's important that everyone realize that this is a role play e-date. So some e-dates are legitimate where they're actual dates. People actually like meet up and chat afterwards. That is not the show. This show is aimed at basically being like dating help. So, um, with that, I'm really big about protecting my guests. So my guest today is Toph. That means that when Toph comes on, she's gracious enough to go on this e-date with you to practice, help you practice your skills and give you feedback and flirt with you and be very kind. But you are not to be DMing her afterwards. If I find out that any one of you from my Discord or whatever, or from Toph's, messages her directly as a result of this show with the idea of like, hey, we've went on one date. Can we go on a second? Um, you will be banned from entering any other show in the future. You will, your name will be blacklisted. So you won't be banned from my Discord. You can still hang out and whatnot, but you will never be welcome back on the show. That's a really, really firm rule that I have. Um, however, if Taft decides to DM you, um, that's definitely something that she can do. Um, she can talk with me about it afterwards if that's something that she's interested in. Um, uh, da, 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 don't violate TOS. So some people might be coming in from YouTube. Uh, TOS is going to cover any hateful slurs, obviously, um, and derogatory comments about kind of protected vulnerable groups. Uh, just in general, maybe try to avoid getting into politics. Pro tip date, uh, in general. Um, be prepared for what you're coming to the show with. So each scene or date is going to be 10 minutes. We give you each 10 minutes. When you come on to the show, you need to list what skill you want to work on. So there's tons of skills. You could list cold approach, which is like approaching a stranger in like public to like meet with them and maybe get their number. You could do first date banter. You could do flirting. Um, you could do like third date, like transitioning into like maybe being like more serious in your relationship. So like that kind of conversation, the only role plays we don't do is we don't do anything that's like fighting related or like really negative. So we don't do any breakup prep. Um, that's a really awkward one and nothing that's going to be therapy esque in any way. So like, you're not supposed to be coming on and being like, I have depression. What do I do? That's not what this show is about. Um, unfortunately I will lovingly remove you from the show if you do that. Um, so list what skills you'd like to work on. And then what the scenario is. So for example, if I came on the show, I might say something like, I want to work on my cold approach with Toph. And the setting is uh, a coffee shop. Uh, Toph is just sitting there on her laptop working on something and I'm going to approach her and try to, you know, slide in her DMs essentially, right? That's a really simple scenario. Um, role playing is fun. It's easier than it looks. You just basically pretend that the scenario around her isn't, I don't know where you stream your bathroom, a bedroom. Um, you just pretend that you're actually in the coffee shop. So it'd be really weird. For example, if you came on and you're like, that's a really nice mic because she's in a coffee shop. She doesn't have a mic, you know? Um, finally, while you're in the waiting room, don't be a troll. If any of you are trolling, if you're being inappropriate in the waiting room, I have two mods in there, sneaky mods. They will tell me you will also not be allowed to come on the show because I don't trust you to not be a troll on the show. If you're a troll off the show. All right. A couple of things to keep in mind as well. Um, you also need to pick easy, medium, hard. So typically tough, easy is, uh, you're going to be extra, super warm. And if they drop mm -hmm. the conversation, you're going to help pick it up and kind of ask them questions. So you're really going to help them along. Medium is going to be, you're going to be decently friendly and warm, but you're not going to pick up the conversation. If they drop it, you'll just kind of let it drop. And you can even cue like getting awkward because the conversation's dropped. Hard is going to be, you're not warm and you're also not going to help pick up the conversation at all. And then some people go for nightmare mode. You can kind of make it up as you go. Um, just so you guys know, treat this like a real role play. So if you're on nightmare mode and it's clear that Toph fucking hates you, you're allowed to end the scene early and be like, at this point, I think I would walk away because I don't want to keep harassing this random woman. I'll on the pursue street. you. <laughs> She's coming. We'll nightmare mode is nightmare mode is actually Toph stalking you. It's going to be yeah. super great. <laughs> Um, yeah, as, as the guest, your job is just to be cute and then give feedback to our, uh, contestants, um, about how they did basically. Um, that's about it. Uh, any questions for you on your end? 
Sounds good. Okay. Nice and easy. Um, so we'll bring on the first guest. Um, what's going to happen? We're going to bring them on to Savage I think All three of us are going to turn off our cameras. So it's just you and the guest. And then we'll kind of go from there. Make sense? Perfect. All right. I'm going to bring on the first person. I didn't actually keep track of who was first. Um, do you know, Tink, who was first in this group? Yes. So the first, it was, it was actually a tie between two. So it was either Skin Human or Wolfgang. Okay. We'll bring in Skin. Um, hopefully they don't crash. Hello, hello? Well, well there I am. Am I in here? Yep, you're oh. here. Yes, you are. Hi. Hey. I'll turn my camera on. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello, everyone. All right. Hey, what are we Skin. working on? I think. Um, oh, I didn't know there were specific like exercises. Uh, I wasn't watching stream. Did you like explain anything? Oh my <laughs> slacker, dude! I was in waiting room. No, because like you watch the stream. You're in the community. Watch the fucking stream. Like uh, you just you just like there's right. difficulty, right? I was gonna do the hardest one. Okay. okay, okay. For funsies. So um, you basically get to set the you set the stage. So it's uh, as okay. you know, I think it's kinda like role played. So you figure out what the stage right. is. Like are you meeting for a first time in a coffee shop, blah 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 blah. And then like you said, you set the limit. So whether tough is gonna be like super cold, hard, or like what exactly the deal is. Whatever you want. Okay. So what do you Interesting. Got? Um all it's right. Music festival. You know what? Maybe I maybe I should practice. Maybe I should practice for uh, talking to my gym crush. Oh, yeah. To gym girl, right? Let's go. So cold approach, yeah. cold approach. Oh, you guys wow. have seen cold each approach. other at the gym a couple right. of times. Okay. Sure. Uh, made some eye contact. Um, all right. I'm going to set the timer. Going to give you guys 10 minutes and I'll mute my mic. And then you guys can go, go wild. Taff, any last questions? I want to make sure you feel super comfortable. No, I'm good. I'm just pumping iron here. Nice. And nice. you want a hard boat, yeah. you said? Oh, no. Skin? Um. Yeah, let's do hard mode. Let's do hard. You buy. You up and down. You want. You, you right. still got time. Nah, nah. Hard or hard, hard, hard mode? Hard okay. is fun, right? I'm All right. Yeah. Not do hard mode, right? Ooh, let's go. All there right. Go. Good luck. All right. Ten minutes. Go ahead. Get in there. Oh hey, hey. What's up? How you? How you doing? I. What are you doing today? Arms. I'm just about to head out. Yeah, I just I just hit a personal record, but yeah. Oh shit! What it, what was it? It's two thirty on the bench press. So wow, that's even more than I can yeah. do. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I, so I just yeah. nice. I just got done working legs, so that's pretty cool. Um, I love your haircut, by the way. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. I must stay out of your eyes. Mine is like super annoying. Yeah, now I have to use like a headband. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and I love your top too. I wouldn't expect that to be worn at the gym, but it's like it's really cute for sure. It's very impractical. It's very <laughs> impractical. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, the buttons mm -hmm. are very dangerously positioned at them. So For sure. I can't, I can't do too many exercises. Ah, uh, that's fair. I mean what else are you at the gym for other than like to look cute right right wear dress clothes exactly i mean that's usually what i do so like do you live around here like what do you do for work like i just like post sexy pictures online yeah so you don't get out of the house very often not a lot of reason to Oh, that's so fair. I do that, but not for work. I do that for free. Um, I do that on the side. Um, mm -hmm. That's cool. I work at a bookstore, so. That's a cool job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, usually I'm like a very cold, like, don't ever respond warmly to people, but that's a cool job that will mm -hmm. elicit a good response from me. Definitely. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you're very pretty. I really like your glasses. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah, no, they help me see you, which is nice. So. 
yeah, I just, I can't do that with like masks and stuff. I just keep my uh, contacts in for sure. They are very annoying for that. Yeah. But yeah. you're a fellow not being able to good see a person. So exactly. I appreciate I'm, that. I'm super blind. I see you have earphones in. What kind of music do you like? I do. I listen to all kinds of music. And I really mean that. Some people say that and they don't listen to all kinds of music. They're liars. They're posers. So I totally relate. What are, what are some of your favorite artists? Um, well, Kanye was in my, my top listen to for a while. Me too. But he's sometimes acts a little bit crazy online. He's going Death Con 3 on Jewish people. Have you heard? I, I have heard. <laughs> I hope my my poor Jewish mother survives his Death Con 3 rampage. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I mean, I also like Kanye's music. Not him. <laughs> but he's a musical anomaly, I think. What's your favorite album by him? Um, hmm. I think that My Beautiful Dark, Dark Twisted Fantasy, classic. I think maybe okay. Blazes. He was a little bit late to the party with some of those, like, experimental sounds but really very good yeah i mean just like mm-hmm. death grips did it oh for sure but for sure i think he took inspiration from them for no, sure but he he did it very well so he did i agree yeah that is actually my favorite album by him it's jesus right on. gets you pumped yeah definitely i do listen to it sometimes when i'm at the gym black skin sure. head the pump yeah, yeah definitely well that's really cool um what do you do for fun usually Nerdy things, yeah. Me too. I like yeah. to. I wait. Actually, I couldn't tell if you said nerdy things or dirty things, but both apply. Both apply. I said nerdy things. Yeah. Okay, nerdy things. Okay. Yeah. I was like second guessing myself. Yeah. No. Cool. If I said dirty things, I think that would be a good chance for you to gr- agree and jump in on that. So yeah. Either way. Either way, you're safe. Well good to stay hydrated um especially okay. here at the here at the gym where we're i know why i brought iron. this like, restaurant to the gym <laughs> it's not a practical water bottle i i don't know how you haven't spilled that to be honest yeah no um I just keep it very safe damn that's cool um you seem really cool. Like I, I, I enjoy talking to you. We have a lot of common. Do you have like Instagram or something? I can earn it. Can I get your number? I could give you my number. Sure. Okay. For sure. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Whip out right. my phone. Ah. Hand it to you. Tell oh. you to put it in. <laughs> I like that we're like play fighting right now. It looks like I you're about to karate chop me. Number in. <sighs> I do yeah. know how to box. Impressive. Yes. You can defend me. If we exactly. Go on as I can. I can be like the hey mama's lesbian. Mm. That like. You're gonna get like a backwards baseball cap. Yeah, I don't know how tall you are, but. Very tall. You are. Yeah, Lying. I doubt that you're taller than me. Really, I I actually think you're lying. I can't tell if you're joking or not. I'm not. I'm a giant. I am six foot seven. <laughs> okay okay i'm gonna wrap oh. things up <laughs> oh this is so good hold on uh my chat is screaming so six foot seven makes the what do you what did you say the venture was you say 220 yeah it makes it plausible 230 yeah that makes it plausible yeah 230 230 yeah yeah, yeah 230 that makes it plausible <laughs> oh my god okay it's very hard to act cold to people <laughs> i know you were the nicest yeah, nightmare mode you were, ever you you're, nice. yeah your sunny disposition is just it's just hard to it's hard to break through yeah. next time i'll be really mean i promise okay, okay. yeah for do you sure. want to sit here like no, I don't. I don't know who that is. I don't. Excuse listen to me. Music. Didn't you realize this is the gym? I'm not here to speak, peasant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well done. Um, we'll maybe start with Taff. How did you feel about the date? Mm. Oh, actually, let me go later. I have to think about it because I. Uh, you guys have the benefit of thinking about. Yeah. Your analysis, and I don't. I have to think about it. Fair. Okay. Uh, do you want to do in order? Kills, deaths, assists. 
Sure. Yeah. Do we want to see how hey. skin felt? Because uh, if skin <clears throat> identifies sure. certain things, there's no point in like beating a dead bush. So. Sure. Mm. Dead bush. Dead <laughs> bush. bush. Uh, I think beating. <laughs> dead bush. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'm out of oh PC troubles, but I'll be back in a sec. No okay. Worries. All right, baby. I love you. What did you think about it? <laughs> how do you think you did skin? Um, I think I did. I think I did okay. Um, I I'm pretty good at asking questions. It's also like pretty like easy if you have something in common. Like obviously, like we kind of connected on like the music, um, and that kind of like led conversation pretty easily. Um, but uh, I feel like I was asking a lot of questions. I don't know if that was a good or bad thing if I asked too many questions. Um, but yeah, that's I don't really have any thoughts on it other than that those like basic observations. Uh, I think Nick, you're doing uh, kills. So kill, KDA yeah. kill is where you did really well. Death is where you kind of fucked it up. Assist is this was pretty good. If we tweaked it a little bit, it would have been perfect, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So for kills, uh, I'm going to echo what you were kind of uh, saying about asking questions. You were doing a really good job of putting the emphasis on TOF, which is the vast majority of people in my experience really appreciate. People love to talk about themselves, especially if you make it easy. If you ask drawing in questions, if you get into their world, which you did really well uh, talking about the music, asking what TOF was listening to. That was a, that was a great idea. Um, mm. And also the the little neg you had at the near the very beginning with the like compliment the top, but also like it's kind of like out of place at the gym, no? Like that that led into a good little riff. Um, the one thing I would add uh, is I think you could any question that hits well that leads to more follow up, you can sit in that a little bit more before moving on to the next one. But that'd be the main thing I would say. Yeah, you're really good at asking questions, really good at staying engaged, really good at pulling. Uh, really good at pulling her in. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if Tink is back yet. Tink was doing the deaths. Okay. Oh, Tink is doing deaths? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there, were, there weren't that many deaths, but there were some things like uh, spacing in between, like kind of like the pacing of your conversation. If you leave open space, sometimes that does let you be a little bit comfortable, but you can use that empty space, right, to do like a soft tension, uh, like setting joke, right? So like Nick was saying about like the small neg, right? So like, mm -hmm. a, like a small neg that is like still, still nice, right? And a little bit complimentary. So something that plays on something that's not an insecurity, right? So like, oh, so you just wanted to look hot then, I see like aesthetic over function i get it right so something like that you know so something like subversive that you can throw in in that empty space to kind of give them some some space to play back off of you right so it's just pacing right so just pacing mm -hmm. for sure okay. all right your assists so there's a couple of areas that i thought were pretty good that could have been like improved a little bit so at one point um, you thought you heard dirty when she said nerdy and she took that really well. Um, so that was good when you like clarified. So when you said, did you say, did you say nerdy or dirty? That's a really good line to like prompt in and she received it well. And you could have really upped the sexual energy a little bit by like when she clarified being like, oh damn, I was really hoping you said dirty or something like some sort of play into like, you were okay. kind of hoping that it would be a little bit sexual, especially cause she seemed to like laugh and she also offered a joke about being dirty as well. Um, so that could have been something that you definitely like leaned into a little bit more. Um, there was a couple of times that Taff just, Taff has a lot of really like cute mannerisms. Like she was like, eh, it's like bump into the beat and just does a lot of very cutesy things. Um, I noticed that you would notice it and like smile on your own. You can also, if you're noticing these things and you think it's cute, it's always not a bad idea to let a person know. Like when they like do like mm -hmm. bumping to the beat, you can like look at them and be like, bump it to the beat and like mimic them. And then like you can both laugh and be like, that's really cute or something like that. So it, all of her cute little mannerisms create really fast, easy ins for compliments, rapport building and like warmth and also creating like an immediate mm -hmm. like inside joke between you two. Um, so there's a couple of moments I would just lean a little bit more into that where I noticed you noticed them and you smiled and she like felt like warmly received by that, but you could have like turned it up even more a little bit to really play into that so that she hears explicitly that you're noticing these cute behaviors and kind of um, 
that you enjoy them essentially. Okay. Tough. All right. Um, I think I will echo a lot of what other people said. Like, I think you did a good job of asking questions and always keeping the conversation up. It's always a little bit hard to like identify issues in such a short time. I will say, I think that you came on like really strong with the compliments, but like, I wonder if it would be easier for you to start like a little bit less complimentary, like a little bit just like more friendly and then ease into that later. Because I feel like in real life, if someone came up like immediately complimenting me, I might just like shut them down very quickly, like very early on before I actually like get to know them or see that they're cool. Um, Just because like, I'm not interested in like being flirted with by any random person. But after having like a back and forth about music or just a back and forth joke about anything, I'll then be like way more receptive to those compliments. So I think that like Mm -hmm. maybe like one or two is like good, but also I think that if you like, if you tailor them so they ramp up as you're talking, I think that that's a really good way to like always be increasing the sexual chemistry and tension. Yeah. All right. All right. Good job. Um, thanks for coming on. I'm going to shell super quickly. If you guys are watching, you're enjoying this and you're curious to give it a try. All you need to do is use my discord link. Disc- you can just type exclamation point discord in my chat. If you're on Tofs, just discord.gg slash not so erudite. Join the discord, hop in the waiting room. You don't even need to take roles to hop in the waiting room and you can leave my discord right away if you're not interested in joining it. So if you want There's to There's a party in try, the waiting room. There is a party in the waiting room. Oh, we'll get FOMO. Party. We'll miss out. All right. Thank you so much for coming on skin. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Wolf, Wolfgang next. Yes. Wolfgang is next. Uh, Taff, would it be helpful if we demoed to you hard mode? Um, Just so you have an ice, just so that we break the ice of being super mean and then you can just follow in step or do you feel like ready to be mean? To be really mean. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll be able to be mean next time. Yeah. Mean and right. cold, right? No smiles, mm-hmm. no cute bopping along oh, to what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You want to think that like you just got off of like a bad work meeting, right? Something happened that you're like pissed or sad or you're just not in the mood to be approached and them approaching you has like mildly annoyed you. That's okay, that's so should I constantly. Here's the thing. Should I constantly be like trying to be like, ah, whatever. And like, I'm going to go. Should I like be saying things like that? If it's hard mode, because that's what I would Just, do in real life if I yeah. did not like someone. Yeah, I, I that that would wor- that would make sense. The only thing is, I'd say try to move away from that a little bit because if someone has absolutely no idea how to salvage it, then it's just like the whole interaction is just dead. So try to shut down the advances rather than the person, because uh, super hard mode would be like first like, hey, how's it going? And you're like. Like, exactly. <laughs> like, uh-huh. which, there's just no show. It's like yeah. life mode. Yeah, 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 that is life mode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So think hard mode, like you're stuck on like a bus or something, so that you can't just walk away. Okay, you you're forced to talk to them. You're you are going marriage. to be talking to them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So okay. it's awkward, but you shut down every advance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But if they break through, right? So say you're like just in a bad mood. So it's not about them. You're just in a bad mood and they like break through the bad mood and you do like naturally find yourself like laughing along with something. Yeah. Allow them to break you out of the bad mood if they earn that, but don't give it to them. Yeah. Right. That's I'm like the at the gym, thing. but I'm chained to the machine. So I can't leave. Yeah. Exactly. That kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to bring in our next contestant. Hello. Hello. Oh, sh- is it time to shine? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. All right, Skylar, what are we doing today? All right, uh, shit, my Discord just moved. Um, yeah, so I want to do a hard scenario, okay, where me and Toftaj, uh, she's stuck with me on the plane home from TwitchCon, okay? We're, we're, we're seat buddies, all right, and uh, I'm going to try to strike up some conversation with her. Nice, that's a good one, actually. Airplane yeah. buddies. Okay. Um, you guys have 10 minutes. Easy, medium, hard? Uh, hard. Is it hard? Is it hard? Yeah. I assume it's she, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me get ready for this to go. All right. Camera's off. 10 minutes. Start scene. 
Camera's not okay. Cool. Uh, hey, uh, I see we're sitting next to each other. Uh, I have met like a lot of people over the course of like this whole event, and I'm super. Uh, it's just super crazy to see you here. Like on the flight home, I thought everything was over. I thought everything was done, and I just wanted to see if I could get to know you a little. What what event are you talking? TwitchCon. About? Oh, I'm not familiar. Sorry. You're not familiar with TwitchCon. Okay. No. Um, yeah, no, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just an event where a bunch of like stupid people, um, come meet each other. People that talk about politics, um, or were, were the group I was a part of. Right. Sounds, sounds, sounds cool. Sounds good. Yeah. What, what brought you to San Diego? Where are you going? Ah, uh, just, Visiting friends. Friends and family? Okay. Mm-hmm. Or just friends? Yeah, just friends. Okay. I mean, that's exciting, right? Do you get to do that a lot? No, I, I try to be pretty frugal with my money, so okay. don't do a lot of vacations. I mean, that's got to be really special. Are you meeting a lot of people? Are these, um, like, where'd you, why, why don't, um, why do you have friends all wherever they are? I, you'd have to ask them. They moved here. I think it was for, for a job for one of them. The other one just wanted to live in a city. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I kind of, I end up having a lot of friends all over the place. I've moved a ton. Um, I meet people online that uh, I just don't seem to meet in person. Um, so it's, um, I don't know. I, I don't get the opportunity that much to go see them. But um, I've ended up... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I end up trying to get get them to to move closer to me. Uh, I've managed to be pretty successful in doing that. Um, I don't, are, do you have any like thing planned, like activities? Are you just hanging out at a house, like getting food, anything like that? I mean, like from what I just did, or in no? The uh, yeah, like where you're going, like when you meet up with them. Oh, no, I'm coming back from... Oh, you're coming back. Home. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so I mean... Going back home. But no, it was it was fun. We went out to eat a lot, for sure. So that was cool. Awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't end up getting to see much of San Diego. I had like a whole list of stuff I was going to do while I was here, and I just kind of got taken up by all the people I was hanging out with. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I hope, I never, hope you enjoyed your time. never a bad thing to be consumed with spending time with people if you're yeah no so i mean that's the whole reason i was out there so yeah yeah right on yeah. any any big plans when you get back home or is it just back to back to normal just looking to chill you yeah. chill yeah i'm gonna probably pass out for like 16 hours i haven't i've barely gotten any sleep and uh i'm hoping i can just like keep my room tidy when i like you know when I come come home with all my luggage and everything, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, do you, does it take a while for you to like recover from travel or? Yeah, no, I'm definitely just gonna do nothing for like the next okay. week. So. Yeah, I'm getting like, um, yeah, it, I, I'm getting vibes from you that you're kind of like a little bit. Um, I don't know, like it was an exhausting trip for you or something. Um, yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> um. Huh. Yeah. I'm at a loss for words. You are you are busting my balls so hard. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Damn, I I I I I picked too hard of a difficulty. I think. <laughs> Because <laughs> I would just drop out right now. Um, yeah. Do you want to bump it to medium? Let's yeah, I'll get medium. warmer. Okay, okay, warmer. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's back it up. Uh, just uh, ask uh, ask Taff again a bit about what she was up to this weekend and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. What did you get up to this weekend? Just hanging out with friends. We went out to a lot of fun places. There's some cool restaurants. We went for a hike. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Do you get out much? What do you guys, what do you like to do? Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, 
I usually feed off of the energy of people around me. So like hikes and other stuff, like unless people are looking to do something, I'm not going to really suggest that. Uh, we got to go out to the beach a ton during the day at night. And that was like the main, main place we went. Um, and uh, that's cool. Cause I'm from Colorado originally. So like, oh. I never grew up around beaches, but seeing the ocean is just a spectacular sight for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't like it much when it's super bright in the morning. I can barely see anything and there's so many people around, but there's just something about like being practically alone and just hearing like the rushing waves and, and everything. And I'm not used to it either. I mean, I lived in Texas, but like central Texas, so the Gulf was always like something I could never get anyone to do or anyone wanted to do. It's definitely, it's an awesome beauty. And I think it's important for people to experience as much of that as they can in their lives. So I'm very motivated personally to go out and see all the wonderful beauties of the world. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's something, um, I don't know, I, I tend to enjoy experiencing it with others. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's really just like about finding that time with other people to be able to do it. Um, well, that's, yeah. that's the best you can, right? To share something with another person. It's what really makes those experiences special. Yeah. I feel like um, as much as I can like enjoy it alone, I'm going to want to talk about it with someone. And it's, it's hard to convey that experience if they, they weren't actually there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just think that Humans are such social creatures. We really enrich our lives by being able to share experiences with other people. Yeah. Did you did you feel that way on this trip with your friends? Like going on hikes yeah, and stuff? Yeah, for sure. Oh. I mean, like, I've made a lot of friends through the internet as well. So some of them I don't get to see that often. And being able to visit them for a little bit was, it's always an enjoyable experience. and. It reminds me how grateful I am for those relationships. Yeah, I think there's um, something like I've I made a lot of those Internet friends before throughout my life. And um, like the process of turning someone that you like just kind of talk to all, a little bit or all the time into uh, someone that has like more depth than like the 2D image they are on your screen. If you even like video call like in my email they could just be a gaming buddy or whatever um and I mean, there's so many more dimensions to a person that yeah. you don't experience just through text or just online and so kind of getting that richness from people i think it requires being able to experience them in all their forms and part of that is real life and part of that is online and so I'm always, you know, looking to have those experiences with people, to meet new people, to explore them fully. Yeah. I, I um, yeah. Uh, what, what do you think keeps you like meeting people on the internet instead of in your real life? Like what, what makes you turn them into people in your real life? I mean, I think that the internet's good because you can connect with so many people and really find people that you would never find otherwise. I think that there's so many different groups of people in this world, like furries, who, you know, 20, 30 years ago, they would have just been people in their own individual hometowns who never meet like another furry or, you know, go back to later, like 50, 60 years ago. That was definitely true. And so the internet has enabled people to really find connection on deep levels that were never really possible before. Yeah, I um, I think um, for me, like there are definitely niche interests I have that just lead me to talking about them with people online. But also just like um, I think earlier on as a kid, there were there was a lot less of a um, a lot less of a buy in with online friends. There was, you know, anything you told them, it wasn't going to follow them, follow you back to school or anything like that. So it was a you know, like a space where you could be a lot more open with people, a lot more like yourself. And then eventually you start to build those connections where actually, even if they don't come to school with you, um, how you uh, like conduct yourself, how you 
interact with them is like more important. Um, so I think, I think that really gives you the space to build something special. For sure. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well done. End scene. All right. All right. I don't know. If my dating coaches are listening. Nick and Tink. All right. Yep. There's one. You might get to go first. Yeah, as far as for thoughts. sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we started like hard mode and then we went to like, just one level down like medium mode. Um, I think that there were a few moments where I was like trying, I wasn't trying, I was trying not to do it like too overtly, but I was trying to give you like a bit of rope or like okay. a bit of a foothold to grab onto. Like um, when I, I was totally talking about connecting with people I th- and talking about doing that on the internet, I think that would have been a really great okay. moment to give like a flirty joke, like, yeah, well, you can also meet people on planes or something, right? And like really connect it mm-hmm. to our situation. Um, so I was trying to talk about like meeting people to give you that. There's also, I was talking about like, connecting with people and enjoying natural beauty. I think that that might've been maybe a good opportunity to be like, yeah, no, I've always wanted to do that as well. And like, try to really connect on that interest. Cause that's, it's like a very broad sort of thing. Like who doesn't like see the ocean or mountains or whatever you could be like, um, yeah, no, but I'm just missing that in my life. And I've always wanted to like bring someone to see. And then you give like an interesting story about your hometown or like, some specific thing that you can really resonate with and be like, oh, you know, I, I saw this beautiful waterfall and, you know, staring out at those crystalline waters. The only thing that I could think about is like how much I would want to share that with someone. And you like connect very deeply with me. It's like, it gives me insight into who you are personally, where you've come from, that kind of thing. Um, so I think that like you did a good job keeping up the conversation, but I think that you could have like, at a lot of different spots, made like the extra step to take it into a more flirty direction. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's really good feedback. Um, we'll maybe go through your KDAs now. Who's on K? Who did the wins? That back. was me. Yeah. So as far as like being uh, social and approachable, you crushed it. Like you weren't of of all of the ones that we've had so far. This was the least aggressive, but most inviting, right? So there there wasn't anything like, hey, how are you? You invited Toph into a conversation, right? There was, there was, there was rapport there. There was, a, there was a softness that is different, right? It's a different type of approach, but it's a really nice approach, right? It's the opposite of the other approach that's like, I'm aggressive, I wanna do things. It's, hi, can I spend time with you, right? I loved that. I loved that approach. It's a different approach than what we usually have, but like we have so few fems. So that was, that was perfect. Right. The, the like, hi, I'd like to get to know you. Right. Crushed it. Like truly crushed it. You put out the invitation. She wasn't picking up what you were putting down. Right. But that's okay. If you want to adopt a different style then you can with more like, Hey, higher energy. Right leading a conversation down a certain direction, throwing in like the little negs and stuff. You can do all of that, but you mm-hmm. don't have to. You can take on the more femme approach and just ask, right? So I thought that was great. I thought you crushed it. All right. I'm on deaths. So areas where I think you kind of really struggled was, so there was a number of times, so you made a couple of presumptions right at the beginning that were really off and wrong. We assumed that she was coming from TwitchCon and a couple of other things that were super off. My recommendation is once you've been wrong, in my view, I go with once I've been wrong once, but if you're pretty sure you've pegged somebody maybe twice, but the moment you've you're wrong about a presumption you've made about somebody immediately switch to an exploratory and stop making statements about like, it seems like you're like this type of person. Cause if you're off with the first one, you typically lead with mm-hmm. your most confident guess. You're probably off with a number more. And it, every time you're wrong, it's going to like make things more and more awkward. So if you've been off once, my recommendation is typically switch to an exploratory style of conversation and don't presume anything about them. So, um, that would be one thing that I think was, was a little bit rough and, and the cut and you didn't come back from being wrong very well, right? You could have like made a joke or like, you could have just like kind of smoothed it over. But you mostly were like, Oh fuck. 
And so then you both like lingered in the oh fuck for a little while, which made it feel like it was worse than it actually was. Because it wasn't that big of a deal. Like you thought she was coming from TwitchCon. She wasn't like, whatever. That's not a big deal. Um, you probably I'm guessing you got a little in your head and you were like, fuck, I don't know where to go from here. Right. So just try to like roll along a little bit easier and just relax. Um, if you're dealing with somebody who seems like kind of grouchy, she was kind of being like the ultra conservative. Like, I don't spend money. I don't have joy. I don't do fun things like no, 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 no. was like kind of her response. <laughs> if you still want to try to maintain the conversation, I would do it in a very like conciliatory, apologetic way. Being like, hey, I'm so sorry to bother you. I mean, like, hey, like, uh, you know, so very much in that that bridge building and kind of coming in a little bit like more submissive with like belly up but being like, hey, I don't. Hope I don't bother you. These types types of things, which will necessarily somewhat disarm the like antagonism, because if they're already seeming annoying, and then you come in and read that and go like, "Hey, I'm really sorry to like interrupt you again. I was just wanting to ask you one other thing about like, and then maybe something about like their clothing and what they were doing this weekend." They're going to be more receptive to it because you've already acknowledged that awkward elephant, which is that they don't want to be approached, and you're apologizing for it and then continuing to approach. That would be a really good bridge builder. Um, and then the lastly, when you switch to medium, one thing that I think uh, really could have been dialed up is Taft started using really expressive, flowery, rich, emotional language. Um, and you were asking great questions to follow up. What I would do is mirror that language. Typically, if I'm listening to somebody, um, I think at one point I wrote down, humans are such social creatures is a very interesting way to say that. That's a very impactful statement. If nothing else, mirror that to show that you're matching that deep emotional energy Um, because she's kind of being vulnerable by basically like being like, I'm being highly emotional and like um, somewhat flowery in my language by mimicking it and matching it. It's going to make her feel more comfortable in the conversation and lead you both to probably like a bit of a deeper space because you're matching it. So when you when she said like humans are such social creatures, you could have paused me like, oh, my gosh, like that's a really like that's a really good way of putting it. Like, what do you mean by that? Um, would be a great way to take that. Um, so really leaning into the language usage and kind of mirroring some of the more, more emotive language would be my recommendations. Okay. Assists? Cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think between Erudite and Toph, you guys probably got pretty much all the assists. Uh, the main, which great job. Um, the two things that I would kind of... Uh, echo on top of was you know you kept things really smooth and approachable and comfortable you didn't make any big crazy ass you didn't jump like way into toff's world or ask her to come way into yours or may do anything like super jarring um i think you had a couple of opportunities where you had uh you you could have potentially taken the conversation to a little bit of a different direction maybe made it a little bit more uh, familiar. Uh, Toph gave a, a decent amount of like uh, direction as far as like what Kylo was saying just a minute ago about um, making the conversation more thoughtful and more contemplative. So you match Toph really well on the warm end, like so on like one uh, uh, matrix, I guess. But you could have matched Toph really well on on the other matrix too, of kind of like going to a more like. Uh, continental way of like talking about things, getting into the esoteric and all that sort of stuff. And basically, yeah. Can you put your hand up top? Yeah. Can I continue saying things? Yeah. yeah of course. Go for it. I think that it's always really good if you're approaching to always be kind of like upping things a little bit. So like, if you're like flirting, you want to like flirt and then get to a point where we're both comfortable with that level of flirtation. And then push it like a little bit more, but you're just incrementing slightly. And so I think that like, you know, first of all, like, sorry for being so cold. That's very hard to do, but like, <laughs> you're very pretty. I love your eyeliner. Um, and like, I think that you have lots of things that I can like compliment and I can like flirt and be like reciprocal about, but as the person who's kind of on the other end I can't really be incrementing or like ratcheting up that flirtation. So like, I think that when you're approaching, like that is really a very hard responsibility to have, but that would be like a good thing to think about too. It's just like kind of pushing it with every, every step. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But yeah. Cause oh, the here's the other thing. It was very comfortable. Like you're, you're very easy to talk to you. It was very chill. Um, and that was like, good. I felt like we were in a good position there. So you were like in the perfect spot, I think to just like 
ratcheted up a little bit, especially once we went to like medium and I was being a little bit warmer. Um, yeah. I think that would have been like a great opportunity to do that. And then I would have like followed you with that. And so I think that would have been cool. Yep. I think, I think I get really comfortable too at that level. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I feel good about this. If I escalate, it's going to start to, I'm gonna, that's going to be more to figure There's out. risk there. And right? usually I'm a little bit slower when I have conversations with people. I will increment slower. Mm-hmm. And this is a 10 minute conversation. Right. Um, so there's, I got to keep that in mind. And it would probably help me to escalate even in those longer combos. Awesome. All right. Sweet. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Tyler. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Damn, right. Toph, you're a natural. Your your advice is fantastic. And yeah. like you're right after that first one, your levels have just been like on. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Uh all right. How where's your spoons at? Got energy for a couple more? I have so much energy. All right. Up next, we have Keishol. Hello, Hello. Keishol. Hi. How's it going? It is going Dude. super good. Here we are. Hold on. Just getting my video up. Fuck off. Um, Hi. Hello. Fuck off. It's been a while. I now everyone, everyone relax. I'm here. I know you've been struggling a bit with me gone, but I'm back. No need. No need to worry. Fuck off. No need to worry anymore. All right. I, I, the fires are are going out already. I can. There's, the smoke was in the room, and now I just I can breathe clearly. You can breathe clearly. Everything's breathe okay clearly. now. Yeah. Psych. amazing okay what are we working on today okay fuck off i want fuck off to so on a first date um a mutual friends fuck fuck a mutual friend set us up uh and we're we're just like on a first date on a park and i'm trying to work on like um i guess ice breaking you know like like people have their walls up a lot just kind of getting them to relax to a little bit okay. yeah so you guys Psych. know know each other a little bit you've been set up so it's not like a cold approach but you don't know much about each other i've been texting a ton or anything like that exactly yeah. yeah what sort of difficulty are you shooting for like easy to medium medium i'm going i'm going okay last time i did i did like easy medium i'm going full hard mode this time psych okay. I'm going to try full, try full like, hard yeah. mode, but but with the understanding that they that the, our mutual friend told them about my tics, so they're not just going to run away. Okay, you're not allowed yeah. to run away. You're stuck with me. <laughs> Damn, everyone's going hard. This is crazy. All right. <laughs> Wants me to bully them. Yeah, they just want you to step on. Dominant. That was the goal. Oh no, Taff, step on my throat. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, cool. Everything good? Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm. Fuck off. I'm good. Yeah. All right. Good luck. Okay, and and because it's not actually, I'm not. I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I'll say it after. Okay. All right. Ten minutes. Start scene. Oh, okay. I see how it's working. Okay. Fuck off. Hey, so, uh, oh, I can't hey, hear you. Oh, there you show. go. Skyler's my name. Oh, Skyler. Yeah, no. Our... What was your name? Uh, April. April. Okay. Nice to meet you, April. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so, nice. um, you, how, how long have you known Ashley? I've known her for a few years. Uh, we got connected in college, so that was really cool. She hit it off immediately, so. Nice. Okay. Litmus test. You're at a restaurant. Fuck off. And the, the waiter gets your order wrong. How do, you, how do you respond? How do you treat the waiter? Shh. I... <laughs> I'm not very good at being like assertive. So as long as it's not like too off, I probably just wouldn't say anything. But um, yeah, I don't know. It, it depends on how off it is. And then I might be like, hey, I'm actually deathly allergic to this. So I should probably not have this in front of me. So it depends. Okay. Okay. If you are allergic, would you just say, hey, I'm 
I'm really allergic to this or how, how would you do that? That seems like the path of least resistance. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Hey, you passed the litmus test. I always, um, I like to make sure people treat service staff well. I feel like that's a really good uh, benchmark of a good person. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all talk that, right? You haven't seen it happen in action. That maybe, I, maybe I turn into a mass of Karen, so. Ooh, that is true. If you turn into a mass of Karen, here, 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 here's a question. Mm -hmm. You have three wishes, all right? Is it your responsibility? Fuck off. Fuck off. Is fuck off. Is it your responsibility to use those wishes to make the world a better place? Or do you think you're, you would be morally in the clear to use those for your own selfish benefit? That's a hard question, but an interesting one. So I'll definitely give you that. I would like to think Fuck. that I would use the wishes for the benefit of humanity, but it's hard because, you know, I've never been in that position where I have unlimited power. And I think that although I would hope that I do good with them, if someone did just use wishes selfishly, I don't know if I could blame them fully. Okay. Okay. So, so using, fuck off. So using the wishes selfishly is sort of like a moral neutral. I think it's understandable to be like tempted by that kind of power and to just like the first oh. thing you think of is, you know, you wish for something that personally benefits you. But yeah, I don't know. I think that ideally you wouldn't do that. You would give it a little bit more pause and you'd think like, okay, I could use it for this, but I could also help others. Okay. So so you think that you would at least try to resist that temptation? I would and hope use so, it yeah. For the, do you think that's that's a uh your duty to do that like when you're when you're given this basically godlike power do you think it is your duty to use that power for to make the world a better place or do you think it's just a good thing to do whereas not doing it doesn't necessarily make you bad Shh. yeah no i think it is i, I think that that is like a responsibility like a special responsibility if you have a lot of power, it's just, I, I definitely don't fault people for not necessarily using it for good. I mean, that's why most people shouldn't have power, right? Because most people would not use it effectively. So, okay. okay. So sort of like, uh, yeah, it's your responsibility, but also I don't blame you. I don't blame you for, for, you know, using it, using it for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's okay. just kind of like, it'd be like expected, you know? some random person got three wishes. I wouldn't like condemn them if they didn't use it to save humanity. Like but how I dare also you think not do that, that? Yeah, there's also, there's a lot worse things you could do with three Fuck wishes off. than just like do something like sort of selfish. Like you could really hurt people with three wishes. So the, the moral per parameters for what you could do. Selfishness, probably not the worst option. Okay. Cool. Good. Good. Good to know. I'm, I, uh, I find that not everyone likes to think about stuff so deeply like that, just like off the bat. Do you have any, do you have any like pressing questions about ethics or anything that you, that you like to think about? Cause that's sort yeah, of a, no, I mean, I enjoy ethics, ethical conversations. Okay, that's good. Do you have any pressing questions that you often think about when it comes to ethics? You know, I think that your questions about power do hit to things that I'm very interested in. Responsibility and the ethics of having power. I think freedom is a really interesting thing to question. Like, to what degree should people have freedom to make bad decisions? So... That's an if, interesting one. What... What is freedom? Like, how would you define it? 
I think that freedom is, and there's kind of like this positive and negative freedom, right? So like okay. there's freedom to not be coerced or pressured into doing something. But then there's also like, you know, Fuck up. freedom in the more expansive sense, which is like a rich person might have more freedom because a rich person can charter a private jet in a way they have like more accessible options for action than a poor person. But that is kind of like a, a positive freedom from their resources rather than just like both the poor person and the rich person are equally, you know, not constrained by someone forcing them not to use a private jet. Not to use. Hey, like the laws don't prevent poor people from chartering a private jet. It's just, it's a financial constraint. Right. Their ability is not to do that. Okay. Like the ability. Yeah, that's actually, fuck off. That's fuck off. That's actually a pretty good uh, definition of freedom. I, the positive and negative freedom. Do you have a line where you, where you draw it? Because for me, I feel like, I feel like there have to be some, some like given positive freedoms. What would be doing the giving though? Uh, I mean, it depends on the situation if if you're talking about like education uh like we provide a positive freedom for educate fuck off fuck off a positive freedom for education for children mm -hmm. so the taxpayers pay for that and i think that's really worth it because it's it's really really useful to have an educated population and it pays for itself okay awesome oh that's it <laughs> that's it that we'll continue is... this later. Okay. <laughs> All righty. How'd you guys feel about it? Taff, uh, do you want to go first or do you want to go last? I can go first. Okay. Um, uh, it, it's hard for me to <laughs> be like very cold because I, well, I think you opened with a very interesting question that I was like not really prepared for. Well, specifically when you started talking about like the powers and the wishes and responsibility and its connection to power that just like hits to my little brain where like even if i really disliked someone i would want to talk about that with them so i think that that's good especially if you've like if you know a person like in this scenario we're on a date or set up by a friend presumably you like know something about me that i might like that so i think that that if that really if that's like your approach your strategy here i think that was a really good choice and i think that that would be a good way to like get to know me i do think that like again maybe it's just like because it's like on a date i think it'd be good to like just throw in the occasional flirtation right where like with your three wishes there's like a lot you can do with that creativity wise where you could say something kind of flirty or like you know well, you could make a joke like, well, as part of my wishes for the benefits of others, I would wish that you have like, you know, a million, I don't know, roses or something like that. Right. And you that's corny. But if you say it mm -hmm. as a joke, that's that can be funny. And like that'll get a laugh. So I think that that could be good if you're to just like steer it into a little bit more like flirtatious territory. That would be best. I pulled the same stunt on Kyla. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Where it just give them a question too interesting so they have to come out of their role. Yeah. <laughs> it's effective. It's effective. All right. What I was gonna say before before y'all dipped and I said I'd say it later is that I had a different question that's that interesting that I had prepared. Um but because Taftaj didn't see me ask that same question to you, I was free to just use that. Yeah, that's true, that's true. All right, we're gonna do your KDA. Who's got, right. who's on kills? Uh, wait, I think I'm on kills. I wrote down kills. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be, but that's what I, what I wrote down. You wrote kills. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, you did a great job, like really quickly, uh, making the conversation contemplative. So whether or not like, uh, from like the meta of the interaction, like whether or not you were told, like maybe you were told by the mutual friend, like, you know, toss like a little bit of a sapiosexual. So, you know, if you just take her into the uh, talking about like topics and stuff, she'll take that. Or if it's just like, that's just the way that you open either way, obviously phenomenal worked incredibly. 
um, bringing it there, staying it there, uh, re-upping with uh, solid questions that carried on the conversation. Uh, you had a good flow with it too. Like you didn't stay on one and kind of like beat a dead horse with it. It was like, as soon as like you were done on one area, I was like, okay, let's take it somewhere else. And you always had like something new to say, something new to, uh, to bring in. And you gave your own thoughts without being like super like, mm -hmm. oh, well, this is exactly what I think about everything. You know what I mean? So really good job there. Good energy, good body language. Keisha, you're really good with expressions. Your face is very emotive, which is very engaging and attractive in any kind of like a social situation. It's just, <laughs> yeah, just being able to engage on that level, I find just almost everybody appreciates it, right? Like it takes a lot of the confusion out of any kind of social interaction. I've always yeah. been told them I react to everything. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. All right. Deaths. Okay. So as far as deaths, um, there was, there was a lot of like conversational aspects to it. Right. So like as as far as like first date, Fuck you did an excellent job of like keeping a conversation, being a good conversational partner. But it's just when you're trying to like increase that, um, I think you naturally would have gotten there, but towards the end of your conversation, just like increasing the sexual tension a little bit, you know? But like if that's not something that you're doing, then it's totally fine. Um, but that's that's really the only thing. It's putting out the okay next step you did an excellent Fuck. job of getting to the point where you're comfortable right and you were having a really good conversation and you were going off of each other but like if you want to take it from like we're having a really interesting conversation to we can be having an interesting conversation at a different location right you can just throw that in there a little bit like yeah i'd really like to get to know you Fuck. but you know, I have, a, I have a meeting sometime in the morning, but I could go for a nightcap before we go to bed. So I don't know if you would like to come back. I probably have like 30 minutes or an hour before I actually have to go to bed. Right? Yeah. So that, just, sorry. Yeah, something like that. So like extending the invite because you're great at the conversation part, but just like close it. You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> to, add, add, to add to that, just a, a, a little bit, I, I really strongly echo that one. Like, you built such good rapport that, like, Fuck for off. some people, it seems like kind of icky, right? But if we commodify dating just a little bit, a Fuck. big part of the reason for the rapport is you're building yourself up towards being able to do an ask, right? Because if you have no rapport, you can't ask for anything. But if you have lots of rapport, mm -hmm. you have the ability to ask, which would have been like really great for you, yeah, leading into. A second date or a more intense date or anything like that yeah uh Sorry, so for next. assists yeah for assists basically i would echo what yeah. everyone has kind of already said of essentially uh having that like sapiosexual conversation like that's very intellectual could be really interesting especially if that's what you're looking for in a partnership the main thing yeah. is that in the midst of these intellectual mm -hmm. conversations you still want to be building the present here and now engagement that you're having right so like one of the best dates i ever went on we like did a walking <laughs> tour of like a museum and a legislative building and it was a very intellectual date but the whole time through body language, through little comments. So like, rather than being like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. Instead, in like a sapiosexual flirtation, you're gonna be like, oh, like you're such an interesting person. Like I would have never thought to say it in that way, right? So it's a compliment that's still sexual building. It's still complimenting the other person, but it's leaning into that kind of intellectualism that you're building into. And using a lot of like body language and like eye looks to build that tension as well, right? So like leaning in when somebody's <clears throat> reading a pamphlet and like glancing up at them and making lots of eye contact um, and making some commentary about your thoughts and feelings about them in relation to the intellectual conversation can be really, especially if that's somebody that's into Fuck that type off. of like engagement, that's going to be a really, really engaging and interesting date that won't just end like a friendship. Because if you kept that tone the whole time, me personally, I would walk away from the date being like, oh, that was a really fun hangout. I wouldn't walk away mm -hmm. from that was a date. Whereas like it, some of the best dates I've had, 
it was intellectual the whole time, but I walked away being like, man, I can't wait to fuck this person, right? Like no intellectual thoughts at all. I just was like really into it. <laughs> um, but that was built through Psych- body language and and talking about the here and now between us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. All right. Thanks so much Great. for coming on. I-